Yo, yo, yo. Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome edition of the Best Practices Show. You ever thought to yourself as a dentist, what do I charge? Like, how do I set my fees? Because I'm not loving the trajectory of what's happening with my fees and what my patients are paying. Well, today, if you've ever thought that, we're going to unlock your full fee potential to show you exactly how to do that and how you can elevate the patient perception and charge what you're actually worth. This is very hard for dentists and team members to figure out. And today, we bring on Ariel Jude, And this is a recent webinar we did in which we walk you through step-by-step how to do this, how to communicate it to your team, and how to communicate it to your patients. Now, you're going to listen to the audio. But you can certainly watch the webinar in its entirety with your team as a team meeting so you guys can all get on the same page. You can go to the show notes, click right there, and watch it as a team. But today, I want you to listen to the audio. I hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you soon. Ariel. Hey, Kirk. How are you? I'm good. All right. All right, all right, all right. Well, welcome, all of you. You're joining us for the webinar. It's going to be a great one today. So uh, I'm excited. Yes. Yeah. I Gina. love talking money. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are in for a treat. Uh, Ariel Jude is one of our amazing coaches here, and she is just a fabulous expert on this. So uh, you're in for a real treat. Great stuff. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So and as we get settled in, you guys have questions, feel free to add them to the chat. I know. Um, to queue up a few things. We are going to be providing CE for this particular webinar. And I'm going to post that here in the chat in just a second. Uh, we also have some downloads that we'll be able to offer uh, for everybody that's attending because there's some tools that'll help you think better through some of the things that we're going to mention. And let me find just the CE thing. Here we go. All right. Angela on our team, many of you know her. She does an incredible job of getting this all organized. And I just have to do my job of putting it in the chat. So here we go. So there it is. If you want CE for uh, this webinar, just follow the prompts and it'll take you right there. And you can put in the codes um, that are listed in the chat. So you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So here we go. Let me fire up. I'm going to share a screen. Can you see my screen here, Ariel? I can, yes. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you guys for showing up for our Thursday webinar series. We're going to keep bringing it. We've got some incredible webinars ahead. And today is one of those uh, webinars that's really going to change the way you think about your practice. So I'm excited that you guys are here and uh, this is a big one. So, um, and again, like I shared before we got started, before we hit the go button, Ariel Jude is one of our amazing coaches and she comes with an incredible background uh, and knowledge on how to make all of this happen. And it's really cool. When Ariel came aboard, she was saying things. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is said so well. So you're going to see 
as we go through this. This is going to be one of those webinars. I'm going to encourage you to take some notes uh, as we're going through it. We're also, if you need help after this, which some of you may, feel free to reach out to us. We are so happy to help you with this because this is a big one. Uh, again, if you can really grasp these concepts. Now, a couple of things before we get started in the actual webinar. For those of you that registered for the webinar, we have an offer for you that you can join our To The Top Study Club. It's our favorite thing that we do or one of our favorite things that we do. We do it quarterly and we started it as just a little study club and it's grown really nicely into two different groups now that run concurrently. And it's an awesome opportunity that if you've never been to a study club uh, that's purely focused on making your practice better and focusing on best practices, come join us. You know, you you can come and you can come for free. And that's what the golden ticket is all about. You can kick the tires. And if you don't like it, you can say, hey, I didn't love it. You know, you don't have to stay. That's okay. But I know that won't happen. So you can join us. And it's an incredible group of thinkers. It's best practices in dentistry. And it's a lot of information crammed into one day. We do it right here in Milwaukee. And uh, you'll have a golden ticket in your inbox. You can also reach out to Gina on our team and she'll facilitate that whole entire process. The other thing you're going to see, uh, our clients have already been exposed to this, but it's the Best Practices Association. I always wanted to create something that was just best practices, best practices in financial arrangements, best practices in clinical thinking. And we started to put this together and it's now available for the public. And so you can join us in the Best Practices Association where we have a lot of virtual learning. Some people are always asking like, I need some good stuff for my team. Well, here it comes. We've got some great things. And Ariel is one of our leaders of our office manager study club. We just started that as a group within it and it exploded right away. I was like, okay, well, we'll get, I think we'll get a handful of people, but it exploded with the number of office managers that are part of that component. And you'll see more of that information in here. And we also have it on a mobile app. So if you're flying somewhere or going somewhere, you can learn while, well, not while you're driving, but maybe while you're flying or something like that. So you can join us back there, but uh, it's good stuff. So Ariel, you take it away. <laughs> this is one of those webinars where I'm just going to add value when I can, because this is way outside of my lines of expertise, but uh, take it away, Ariel. Tell us about what we're going to learn today. Well, before we get started, there is a question on the chat is disabled. So if they do have questions, do you want them to put it in the Q and A? Uh, let's go, let's do that for sure. Okay. Okay. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and put the Q and A and we will hopefully answer them all throughout the lecture. And if time we can definitely get to them. Awesome. Awesome. So, okay. So, um, the saying around here is, you know, ask me about how to bill your full fee. Um, I even have my little button on here. Um, so today we're going to talk about really unlocking your full fee potential. So I know everyone says, oh, charge your full fee, charge this. But what does that mean? Why do we do it? Um, and really, the number one reason is Hold on. because... Ariel, oh, one second. Just, yep. It's kind of hard to hear you a little bit. And I don't know if it's the microphone setting. Can you make just a small adjustment to that? It was cutting in and out. Sometimes Zoom has this um, filter. And how about now? Is this oh, much better. Much better. Yeah. Thank you so much. Cool. 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 Okay. Right. Well, I will add the caveat to my headphones for noise canceling because my dog is uh, in the background. So I apologize for anyone who hears them. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we're talking about unlocking your full fee today and elevating your patient's perceptions because really you need to charge what you're worth, right? As dentists and dental team members, we are worth everything, the value that we provide, and it's more than just the dentistry. So we have to make sure that we're going ahead and charging that. Um, and we see that doing this, right, it takes having really well-organized, documented administrative systems. This is how you're going to be able to achieve that profitability and building the value for your patients. So when I say bill your full fee, 
it's not just as easy as that, right? We have to have systems in place. And like I said, the reason is to increase your profitability and showing the value. So um, if you ask me, right, it's essential. There's no if, ands, buts, what about this, or maybe this. It's one of those things you just have to do it um, in order to have the impact that you're really looking for. Um, and as I said, there's a couple of systems and processes in place that go into that. Um, and so we'll definitely dive into that a little bit more um, throughout today. And then as Kirk mentioned, if you need help, reach out um, because we're all definitely here to help you achieve that success. Yeah, absolutely. I'll just add one more thing. Like this is a big deal and I didn't really realize how big of a deal it is. And even some of our very best practices we've ever coached don't do this very well. And I'll ask him like, what do you, what fee are you putting? Well, this fee. And I'm like, is that your full fee? No. You know, they put in somebody else's, a UCR fee, or they don't charge the full fee. And so if you can get your brain around it, we'll be a little bit repetitive today, but really you have to get good. And this might be a little bit, it's bigger than an, an administrative issue. Sometimes it's an esteem issue or a worth issue. And I think the thing that you have to start with, if you're watching this or listening to this, is you as a leader have to tell your team, money spent on dentistry is one of the best investments a human being can ever make. So don't ever tell yourself, well, we're not worth it. I don't think they can afford it. You have to get good at saying we're worth it. This is an extremely valuable service. And we're going to charge out our full fee, even if we're heavily involved in PPOs. So number one, you got to build your, you, you got to bill your full fee for what you do. Yeah. And as you said, we're going to, they're going to hear bill your full fee 8,000 times today. So if you right. learn anything, you'll at least have that stuck in your brain. You're going to wake up in the middle of the night saying, oh my gosh, I need to bill my full fee. <laughs> Um, but really when we don't bill our full fee and I want to take a little step back, right? Is what does it mean billing full fee? That is your practice master fee schedule. So as Kirk had alluded to, right? As some of us put in our PPO fees and our fee schedules, when we do that, we're really undervaluing our services. So we're telling patients, we're telling ourselves, this is what it's worth. So we're letting the insurance company tell us what our services are value, right? And, and that's not true. So we know, and we won't even get into the world of insurance today, but we know that they don't get to decide our value. So start putting out there, what is your master fee schedule so that you can see it, your patients can see it, your team members can see it. What is the full value? And so that way they know what they're receiving, even if that's not what they're paying. And even if we're giving an adjustment on the back end or whatever it may be, they need to see that this is the full value of the service. Um, and remember, it goes beyond just the level of dentistry you're providing. What about everything else within your office? Your team members, I can guarantee you, you have a high quality team members and they're worth being paid, right? They're worth those levels. They're worth that CE that you're doing. So really communicate that value to your patients when you're diagnosing treatment, everything that goes into it. And that's why you have to show them that full entire fee and value. Absolutely. And so, you know, if you listen to any of our previous webinars, you'll see that the incomes of dentists are not going up. Actually, adjusted costs, you're going to see they're going down and costs are going up. So there's a little bit of a pinch on there. So even if you're in PPOs, you got to charge out your full fee because you may not be in PPOs forever. And you've got to make sure that your fees are in the right range. And we have a great tool. Ariel, tell them about the fee balancing tool. So this is a tool that's going to help you see, okay, where are, what are my current fees? Where am I at? Right. And making sure that we are charging appropriately. And then it's going to help the entire team see, okay, do we know what we're charging? What is our value? What right? is it worth? Right. Because it's, it's important that the entire team knows it. They may not know the 
exact dollar amount of your fee, but this is a great tool to get everyone on the same page um, to understand the value, right? And and I want us to think, you know, when we're talking about full fee, really think of value, right? What is the value? What is the investment that we're making? Um, so if you haven't seen this tool, like I said, it's definitely an easy way. And we tried to make it, you know, in a little bit of a fun way just to get the team around talking about fees and value, right, and numbers. Um, so really just making sure that you're within the correct percentile of charging your fees um, within your area. Yeah, absolutely. And towards the end, when we just kind of open it up for questions, I'll add these tools to um, the chat and you'll be able to get access to them. So, and there's a couple of things you need to know about how to enter your master fee into your practice management software. So the number one is everyone has a master fee schedule, right? And actually, as we're learning, right, there's a lot, sometimes there's multiple. I want to encourage you to get just one, right? What is one fee schedule for your entire practice? And that's your master fee schedule. That is what you say. When if you come to our office, this is how much this service is worth. So that's where you're going to, and you're going to put that into your software, regardless if you participate with insurance, regardless if you give senior citizen discounts, regardless if you have a membership, right? Everyone needs to know what is the master fee schedule. So you're going to put that into your software. And then where is that going to show up? This fee schedule is going to show up on patient ledgers. It's going to show up on our claims um, and right. And a lot of us say, oh, I bill my full fee. I bill my full fee. And that means we're sending it out to insurance. So when I send a claim, I'm sending my full fee. And I would say 98% of people, that's what they do. Um, and if you aren't doing it, first step, go home, make that switch, do that right away so that you're sending insurance. What is your master fee? Because what that's going to do is it's going to tell the insurance, hey, this is the true value, not um, necessarily what you're reimbursing me at, but this is the true value of the services. Yeah. And I like the actual words master fee schedule because full fee schedule, people get confused by that master fee schedule just puts it in a different category. And so it doesn't muddy the waters. So good, good things to think about when you're talking to your team about this. So what does it mean to really bill your full fee? So once you're putting it out there on the claims to really take the next level to be billing your full fee is now showing it on your patient ledgers. Are your patients seeing your master fee schedule? Are they seeing the true value? And are you showing that on once it's in their patient ledgers, right? Are you showing it on your treatment estimates as well? So you may have your master fee schedule in, but then when you're presenting a treatment plan or when you print out that patient's ledger for the day, they're showing a PPO. That means you are not all the way to billing your full master fee schedule. Patients aren't seeing the real value. They're seeing the insurance value. Yeah, absolutely. And um, when you're presenting the treatment plans, it's very, this is just good practice. I think it's really good to practice this first, uh, probably so everybody can see you actually doing it, you know, with, with your team members. Yeah, 100%, right, is everyone needs to see it. Um, and I would say presenting on the treatment plans, depending on your software, it's not as easy on all softwares. So practice it, right, see and what does it look like. Print out a few treatment estimates to see what it looks like. So that way, when you're talking to your patients, right, you're not fumbling. You know exactly what columns are showing, where your master is, if it's showing a discount, whatever that may be. So that's my only caveat is that's the one thing that you can't necessarily say, oh, I'm just going to put select this button. It's going to show on my treatment estimates all of a sudden tomorrow, just depending on your software. But it is important to show on those treatment estimates when you print them out and are explaining to patients, right? This is our 
value. This is what we're estimating insurance to cover. This is your estimated discount, right? Whatever it may be. And then get to this is the patient investment, right? This is what we're going to collect from you on the day of service. A couple of reasons you want to do that on the treatment plans is that you can see to the patient, okay, this is what we're going to collect. This is what the value of that service is. So just because you're paying $300 doesn't mean that crown is only worth $300. No, that crown is worth much more. There's more that goes into it. And it lets them know, hey, you know, let's say insurance doesn't pay or for whatever reason that they come up with, right? They know, worst case scenario, it's this is what it's going to end up being in the end. So you have to let them know that value. Um, I also say... Even what helps you know, right? Um, and, you know, we always say like, oh, if you're not showing it, you're showing yourselves the sugar-coated numbers, right? And everyone's like, oh, I, I don't want to see it. I don't want... Sometimes you need that gut punch. Sometimes you need that feeling in your gut of like, oh, man. Um, but you can't make an informed decision based off of participation or other discounts or anything that you may do if you don't know the difference between what is what are you billing and what are your contracted rates with insurance. So you have to know that adjustment and that write-off that you're doing or you're not going to be able to make a true decision. Yeah. And we'll get into the specifics of this, but there's so, this is a big thing. And I can't say it enough is you should be billing your full fee all the time for everything, even if it's your sister and you're prepping the uppers and you don't want to charge her and blah, 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 whatever. Everything's got to be accounted for because what's going to happen at the end of the month is you'll say, we don't have enough money. And it's inherently challenging because a lot of the numbers that you get back from your accountant are based on collections. And you're not putting in the full fee and the write-offs and how much time and everything. When you put in the full fee all the time for everything, you can start to account for how much you're giving to the practice and what you're getting back. And yes, what Ariel said is right. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. And that's okay. But don't stay there. So number two, we got a code for what we do. What does that mean, Ariel? Every, just as you started saying, right, even if I'm going, I'm not going to charge it, right? Or even if, you know, we know that it's included in a different service or insurance is going to bundle it, you code what you do, right? The patient ledger and the chart, that's a medical legal document. So you want to make sure that you're putting it in there and it's not just in the notes, Right? We're all human. We've made mistakes on our notes, right? But you want to make sure that you're coding for what you do and be, so that your patients know this is everything that we did today. If you include nitrous in a particular service, put it on there, show them the value, and then sure, adjust it off if that's what you want to do. But you have to show them because if if they just think nitrous is included, then let's say they go down and they're considering leaving, right? And then another office is saying, oh, you know, this is nitrous. Oh, it's included, right? They we're, we're devaluing ourselves and saying, no, we're actually providing you an additional service. But patients aren't going to know that if you don't see it. Yeah. And what you're speaking to is all about expectations. Sometimes you think you're doing a lot of great things and it's unstated. And when you have unstated expectations, it lends lends itself to a lot of conflict. So we're a big fan of using this formula here. It's E minus R equals C. And I feel like I can't explain it enough because I use it every day, all the time, 20 times a day. It's expectations minus reality equals conflict. So the only time you'll ever experience conflict is when expectations and reality don't meet. And you're thinking one thing, the patient's thinking one thing, and it ends up not being on the same page. You can see it in their face. They're not happy. And so the clearer we are with our expectations when we're presenting treatment and collecting payment, the less conflict will arise. Don't you think? A hundred percent, right? Showing them starts with showing them what treatment we're entering, what treatment are we doing, what is proposed. Um, And then it goes to, right, once we have it in there, we have to show these patients and give them an estimate. So we have... For several reasons, right? We should give our patients estimates, but to make sure that they're setting true expectations, 
right? I want them to know, okay, we're doing seven fillings today and this is how much it's going to be on an investment side for them. Um, so we want to make sure that they're seeing it, they're signing it, um, because that's going to go into leading to help your collections. You're going to see a huge increase in your collections just by showing and having patients sign those treatment estimates um, and showing them on those estimates. Once again, your full master fee schedule, show them the true value, and then show sure show them like how did we get to this investment, if I'm seeing, oh, I have to pay, that's how much value it is, but I only have to pay this, sign me up, right? We all, everyone loves discounts. We can't say that we don't. We love seeing the discounts. Um, so show it to them, get them on those treatment estimates. Yeah. And one of the things that we talk about behind the scenes, we we're actually talking about this this week, Ariel, is that some dentists don't like to, they don't like to print out the estimates or for patients. And I know if you're listening to this, I know it's not you, but it happens to the best practices. They don't want to tell patients or they don't want to buy. Why is that such a big issue for so many great practices? Well, none of our practices, right? Like I said, it's not us. Um, I will say the number one thing is you're already starting treatment, right? Right. You're already, you're ready. The patient's ready. You don't want to kill the mood by, oh, hold on. Let's talk money. Right. Um, and so I think that's the number one. And it's and we have good intentions. Patients ready. They're saying, yes, I'm ready. Let's get started. You just have to take that small step. The second one is right They're in there. You're working on, you know, an area and you see something else that maybe didn't show up originally. You're telling the patient, oh, hey, let's go ahead and just get that taken care of for you. Right. And you don't necessarily want to stop in the middle of treatment. Once again, you just have to, right? You have to take a moment, give that patient a break and say, you know, okay, I want to make sure that you really know what this value is and what it, the investment may be. Um, so I, I think those are the two main reasons. Um, then I, you know, then I hear the ones of like, oh, we don't have time and we're just so busy and oh, we, we show them when they come in for their appointment instead of when it's diagnosed. Um, to me, those are just limiting beliefs. Yeah, so true. And this is why you always bill your full fee full time. Get good at people telling people the truth all the time about what it costs. And I think a lot of businesses could just do really well if they made promises and kept them instead of implied things. So this is, it's important. Now there's also a negative impact of coding errors and there's quite a few actually. So tell us about that. So what we see a lot is when you're putting the fee schedules on the patient ledgers and receiving insurance checks back, right? We're all human, errors happen when you're posting checks. And what we see is we don't always catch if insurance, maybe they reimburse us higher than what we had put on the ledger, right? So then we would have to make an adjustment. Um, sometimes, so we're losing out on that additional income. And there's other times that I see that we do a double adjustment because we already took one into account for what we sent. Insurance is telling us a different fee, right? We're not all the best at doing math on the spot. So we put that in. So there's another error on you're losing out on doing double adjustments. I see a lot of patients have credits on their accounts and it's because of incorrect adjustments applied due to not having the master fee schedule in. So then we refund patients credits that should have never been. Um, we also have, you know, there's different codings on, is it an uncovered, is it a non-covered service? right? Is it just not part of the insurance plan? Then you can bill up to your full fee, right? So you, but if you don't know what your full master fee schedule is, how do you know, right? So you could be losing out because you're only charging the patient the PPO fee. Um, if they have dual insurance, right? You're allowed to collect up to your full master fee schedule. So there's lots of things that you could just be losing out without even knowing it, um, and patients, right, they feel that negative effect. Yeah, absolutely. So 
And that's when you can get in trouble. You can mess around. With, you can make small mistakes. But when it comes to time and money, you don't want to do that. You want to get better and better about doing that. And then you can also create specific adjustment types and do proper documentation. This is a huge piece of the puzzle. So tell us about that. So this is actually, for my admin team members that are watching, this is one of their biggest requests from their doctors, um, is to have this clarity. Doctors, you will love this after the fact because now you will have such clear numbers. So we have a lot of teams that say, oh, I have an insurance adjustment or I have a, a professional courtesy. And those are the two write-offs that they have in their system. And so then when we're looking in and then they're you know, looking, you're seeing, okay, well, how can, how can I become more profitable? And the answer may be decrease your adjustments. Well, what does that mean when you have everything lumped into one or two of them? So we want you to differentiate them. We want you to separate those adjustment types out so that you can have more information to make better decisions. Absolutely. And so there's a couple common adjustment types and actually we can talk about all of them, but it's more, wouldn't you agree? It's more to, it's better to do more adjustments than just a few buckets. And there, I mean, there are some cases where people have 14 different types of adjustments or more just so they can analyze its impact on the practice, right? A hundred percent. There's really no, I mean, there might be a rule on some softwares, right, of how many you can have, um, but there's no rule saying you should only have three or you should only have five. My rule is to be as clear as possible without overcomplicating it. Um, and so to me, it's, okay, what do you want, right? So some common ones, professional courtesy, right, is when the doctor says that I want to go ahead and give them a discount. I want to go ahead and give include that nitrous or include that fluoride, whatever it may be, right? You want to know your insurance adjustments. What about any financing adjustments that you may have? Do you include uh, finance fees, right, that you may adjust off? Do you have any bad debt write-offs, right? If you send to collections to keep your accounting clean, right, you want to write those off. Um, and then redo, right? How many times are patients coming in and you're correcting something either for yourself, right? Or for one of your partners or your associates, right? You want to know those. Um, and as you can imagine, if all of these were lumped into just one adjustment, you would have no idea to where, where to get started. Yeah, absolutely. So, and you can even get a little bit more specific when it comes to adjustments, so, and as we said, there's no rule. Um, my only rule is to stop when it becomes too complicated. And But if you want to know individual insurance adjustments, if you say, hey, you know, I'm looking and I really want to analyze the different insurances. Okay, well, maybe one is better than the other. Maybe they're both, you know, reimbursing you at high rates, right? Maybe they're both reimbursing you at super low rates, but you don't know the adjustments individually until you're running different reports. And some people say, hey, I don't want to get into running those reports. Some softwares don't have the capability to run the report. So that's when you go to these individual adjustments. Um, yeah. And then the financing, right? The third-party financing adjustments, I would say delineate those two because you want to know how many of your patients are paying care credit, but there's an adjustment on the fee that you're paying for them to use care credit, right? And so it just creates a, um, a headache for you when you're trying to reconcile and you're like, okay, care credit paid me this, but this is what's on the patient ledger. So make those adjustments right away and then you can easily reconcile at the end of the month. Yeah, and absolutely. This might be a little bit more detail than you want, but we have something that's called the payer's wheel that we look in in, de in dental intel when we're coaching a practice. And sometimes people say, well, I'm just involved in, you know, Delta or MetLife. There are different types, sometimes from different states. And it's important to create line items for each one of those because they have different levels of impact on your practice. So, I like the idea of more is better, and it might sound like a little bit of a pain to start, but at least you're not telling yourself a story. 
And you can start to see its impact on your practice when you run those reports at the end of the year. Or, or if you have a great coach, they can take a look at that too. So it's really important. So another thing we have to do is we got to understand the write-offs and working for free. Now, this is one of my favorite here. It's not one of my favorite. It's not funny, but it is an impact thing that I love to talk about a lot. People don't know what write-offs are. And I'll just say this about write-offs. Let me just say, I got to just go off on a riff because we were talking about this. I actually thought about this over the break. Like, it's not even a write-off. You know, it's we were talking about the Schitt's Creek show, which we all, we talk about, you know, everything's a write-off. No, it's not. A write-off, if you own your own business, is something that you paid for that you can use as a reduction to your tax liabilities. I think somebody in an insurance room came up with this idea. Let's call it a write-off. There's some hidden benefit to the words, right? No, it's not. It's not a write-off. You didn't collect it anyway. You didn't, you know, so it's, it's actually an adjustment or a discount. And so I know that's the common language, but there's a hidden implied benefit to write. There's no benefit, none, zero, not even one to a write-off here. So, okay, you go, because you'll keep us on the rails here. But you're, you're right though, is it's not, right? When we say write-off, right? There's a connotation to it of like, oh, it's a write-off, mm -hmm. right? Um, but no, it's just money walking out the door. Like you're just saying goodbye to that money. Um, because you're never going to see it. Um, so, right, what is it? It's an adjustment or it's a discount. And you need to know what that number is. Whether you do anything about it, that is up to you. And if you say, you know, I am okay with this, perfect. Um, but but you don't know if you're okay with it until you see it. You know, I was actually, we're working through this with a team and and I, and I feel so bad for them, right? And I had to do that gut punch. Last year, they worked 77 days for free. Whoa. Now, you got to explain what that means. So, because I'll, I'll explain, but I want your interpretation of that. So, they worked all year long, right? Working really hard to serve their patients. Um, and they're producing. They're sending it off to insurance. Insurance comes back and says, I know this is what you say it's valued at. Here's your write-offs. Here's your adjustments. Um, so the amount of their adjustments, what we did is we, we found out what is their production per day on average, and we divided their adjustments by that. And that's where we got 77. So they had to work 77 days extra just to pay for those insurance adjustments. Um, where that hurts. Oh, that hurts. Cause he's like, I'd rather just stay home 77 extra days. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> just to put you put further mathematical language to that, there are some practices that are writing off as much as 42%. Now, what that really means is you work almost half of a year for free without any money. The average dentist, according to the ADA's most recent, um, studied, or a published survey is the average dentist works 225 days a year that owns their own practice. I hope that's not you listening. That's crazy. 225 days a year equals 18.75 days per month. So that particular practice, just using this math, works 4.1 months for free. They're just going to work for four months without collecting a penny. Now, if that upsets you, that's okay. Like our job is to tell you the truth. You don't have to like it, but it's important to understand write-offs. And the, these things are not going down. There's not going to be a reconciliation in the future where dentists or dental insurance companies get together and they go, you know, we feel really bad. We really have not been very nice to dentists. Let's do this the right way going forward. No, they're going to continue to do this. And that's why you can't get mad about that. You can't get upset. You just have to become more knowledgeable about what this means so that you can navigate away from it if that's what you choose to do. And so we have a great tool. It's called the Act Dental's Roadmap to Practice Profitability. And we'll put this in the chat, but if you use this, you can actually start to analyze your costs and what it means to your practice. And I think that's the biggest thing that you need to understand 
other than your fees because your fees relate to your overall profitability is like, what do I need it to be? And then as you further dive in to understanding the write-offs, there's a couple other things that you need to know. So tell us about that, Ariel. Yeah. And once you start diving in and you getting this information, right, then, okay, now what? Now's the step of saying, okay, where am I at? How do I compare? What am I okay with? What am I not okay with? And as we're saying, right, write-offs and adjustments, there are more, there's a lot of them. They come from different areas um, so that you can see, right, elective write-offs, those are going to be things that you choose to give that additional discount. We see anywhere from 3 to 10% as being a normal range. Um, and it, it, that's where you're, right, you're, whatever you're willing to give. Um, average insurance write-off we're saying is anywhere from 30 to 50%. National average, as Kirk said, is in the 40s. Um, but you want to know, right? So when you're working, right, as we just mentioned, when you're right now 45%, you're working almost half the year for free, right? right. Just because just because you love it so much. Right. And, and the other thing you need to know about this data, because we're freaks about this stuff, there's no national database, of write-offs. Like there's not a collective, you know, place where everybody submits all their data and it's all analyzed. No, only people that keep these numbers like people that work on reduce, you know, changing your PPO structure and all that have accurate data. They inherently have challenges figuring that piece out. And even the best experts that we've had on our podcast, they're like, this is a lot of work for us to even figure out what's going on in general practice. So the point is this, you have to know your own numbers. And when you start to do this, you can start to analyze these things. It will hurt when you first start to do it. But once you, once you start to come out of it, you'll you'll say there's, there's just a better way. And this is why we have to repeat it over and over again. This is why you always bill your full fee. Just bill your full fee all the time for everything, every day. No one should ever be making an adjustment ever. <laughs> I mean, adjustment to your master fee schedule. So another piece of this is you've got to have a clear financial policy. There's a very important aspect to this. And tell us about that when it comes to a great practice. So once you have your master fee schedule in and you have your adjustment types set out, right? Okay, these are how we're going to delineate them. Now you need a financial policy for you, for your team, for your patients, so that you know what is our billing processes so that we all are all on the same page for expectations um, within when it comes to finances throughout the office. Um, and, you know, I always tell my doctors is, you know, sit down and do this, work on this. I know this is not the fun part of doing dentistry. But if you want team members coming back every single day asking you, hey, Miss Jones wants a, an adjustment. Can I give Mr. Smith a, a write-off? Can I go ahead and discount this? That's what you're going to have all day, every day if you don't have a clear financial policy. Yeah, and you're going to be making it up every single time. So we've got a great tool. Again, our we love this stuff. We geek out on this stuff. So we have a great tool that you can use. You can have it for free. Just sit down with your team, go through the process. It's going to prompt you with some questions on what to do and how to do it. All we want you to do is be extremely aligned as a team, whether you have four team members or 40, let's all get on the same page around what our financial policy is. And a couple other things you need to consider here, uh, Ariel, tell us about these. So once you have that, because when you write out your policy, you will then, as we said, have alignment because you're going to be surprised on how your team members communicate with your patients around finances. Do you want them offering care credit as the first option? Yes, no, right? Do you want them offering to pay cash, right? So when we have our financial policy, we all know have clarity. How do we talk to our patients about our finances? How do we, what's the order of payment that we want to accept? Do we accept, you know, do we make payment plans? Do we do in-house financing? Does it all go to a third party? Without having these conversations, it's hard to know what your team members are saying. Yeah. And if it isn't written down, it doesn't exist. So make sure it's in writing. 
you've discussed it, you've updated it. Now, some of you listening to this, you do have one, but you wrote it pre-COVID, you know, and it's sitting in a binder somewhere. So I think the important relevance of any system is number one, is this updated? Does it serve us? And does it apply to our current business model that we have? And that's why we, we really want you to use the tool. Now you have to create two different financial policies. Walk us through this. Yes. And right. They're very similar documents. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, I can barely get through one, right? You're going to create, you're going to make one master financial policy. And then you're going to say, okay, what do I want my patients to know? And what do I want my team members to know? Right. Some of them, you need your patients to know what forms of payment do you accept? When do you, when do you collect payment? Right? Those types of things. If you allow financing, what options do they have? And then you need one for your team members that show them the how. So if I am a team member and you've given me permission to do a senior citizen discount on anyone over the age of 65, I know, okay, I go to my financial policy, that's what it says, and then it tells me, okay, this is how I do it. So that way, I don't have to come to you in the middle of your procedure or while you're, you know, just sitting down at your desk for a quick minute to review some x-rays to say, hey, you know, I wanted to go ahead and give this discount. Is that okay? Okay, I, I know you said it was okay, but how do I do it, right? It creates clarity. Because another thing too is there's so many different ways within your software to do what we think is the same task, but do they all show up on the same reports? Right? If you have three admin team members and they're all putting in your adjustments differently, they're going to show up on, on three different reports different. So it helps have that clarity for you um, and peace of mind to know that your team members, they, they have that autonomy and they have that authority to just do it, go with it, run with it, because you've taken the time to set it up in this financial policy for them. Yeah. And I've said this many times before. And Ariel, you could probably echo this sentiment. I have a special place in my heart for admin team members. There's not a lot of great training out there. There's some, but not a ton. So if, you, if you're a dentist and you have a new admin team member or you have a great admin team member, team members that have been there for a long time, it's really a great idea to heavily invest that they understand these practices. They know how to use them. They know how to think when it comes to this and they're taught from top to bottom how to do it because it, it number one, they'll find great value in it and they'll also be able to support the vision of the practice. Most team members, admin team members nationally just get thrown into this and by osmosis, they have to figure things out. We joke that we don't really onboard admin team members. We waterboard them. And so they're just doing the best they can up there. So in all fairness, it would actually be funny to just throw a dentist up there, you know, once in a while and say, hey, you figure this out. And they go, ah, I got to get out of here. So don't underestimate the power of teaching a great team member, great practices and training. And I, I actually you know, uh, developing them, not so much training them, but developing people so that they're experts at this. And there's a couple other things you want to consider when it comes to your financial policy. Yeah. And when you're doing this, and we've kind of alluded to some of these, you know, but you need to decide what are you okay with? What are you not okay with? Um, you know, what forms of payment do you accept? You know, some some credit cards have higher fees than others, right? Which forms do you take? Do you take checks, right? If a if someone comes in and has a check, do you accept it, right? And as I mentioned to you, is what what order do we offer those options? Because right? if something is going to cost you significantly higher, I'm not going to make that my first option of offering to all of my patients. When do I collect? And I know, right, it's like, well, what do you mean? When do I collect? But can I just let patients come in and leave and then I send them a statement? Do I collect at the time of scheduling? Do I collect in when they check in for their appointment, when they leave for their appointment, right? So what may seem simple to you is not always simple unless it's written down. 
Um, do we offer payment plans? Do we offer financing in-house? If so, what terms do we offer? Right? Do we allow 18 months at $50 each? I sure hope not, right? But maybe you do. Um, but I guarantee if you don't put it down in paper, you're going to have a patient do that. Um, when do you, do we have interest, right? Do we, do we do finance fees? Do we do billing fees? If balances get over a certain amount, um, do we, are there some situations where patients need to prepay? Um, so you have to think through all of these things. And I don't want to scare you because you're like, how in the world am I going to think through all of these scenarios? Just start, right? Get it to 80%. You hear us say that. Get it to 80%. And then as these different scenarios come up, then, oh, okay, I have to make this decision. Add it to my financial policy. So when we said, oh, I have one, right? But it's maybe been you know, a little bit since you've reviewed it. Go back and review it because some of those are not even relevant anymore. Um, and I would also say is if you have a really good admin team member that, you know, is great at this stuff, let them help you. You just have to make some of these decisions. Yeah. I want to go back to what you said about the 80% because that's one of my favorite things ever. This changed my whole life. I hope it changes yours. It's the 80% approach by Dan Sullivan. It's just this, just get started. Like Ariel said, just get it started. It could be simple. It could be ugly. It could be lousy. doesn't matter. Just get it started and get it to 80%. And then once it's working, improve it another 80%. And then a month later, improve it another 80%. So you're just, you don't want to make it perfect. Just improve it by 80%. Three tries through, you're now at 96%. If you always are improving processes by 80%. And that's where great, you know, development comes in. We'll talk about this in a little bit. But uh, as you start to get going on this and you have success, you got to share those successes. So you have an admin team member that says, I just built our vault. They had it worked. What a great opportunity to talk about that in a team meeting and why it's important. It's not about the money. It's the fact that we are now starting to value our time and what we do for patients. And that's a collective celebration. So you got to start somewhere. And most importantly, I would start here, just start with you know, billing out your full master fee. Now we're going to give you a couple quick tips, things that you can start right away tomorrow. Actually, you could do them this afternoon if you're still working this afternoon to make an impact. And um, walk us through that, Ariel. Yeah, you can start taking some of those questions that we've asked and start saying, okay, what is my financial policy? And if you've already have one, you know, okay, what am I doing? Are all those things still serving? So start drafting or editing your financial policy. Um, I would say really do that soon. Um, and then the first step, right, is you can start billing your full fee right away on all of your insurance claims. You can do that as soon as you get off here, as soon as you get home, or as soon as you get in the office tomorrow or Monday, whenever, you can start that. Then, right, okay, how do I get it on patient ledgers? How do I get it on treatment estimates? Start showing patients the value of your dentistry. Yeah, absolutely. And so we've got a great resource, again, a great tool, it's a download that you can use to just start this entire process. How do we start talking about dental insurance benefits? How do we start putting this into the computer? And again, just get started. I would also encourage you, you'll get the replay for this webinar. Share it with your team. Watch it again. You know, if you have suggestions, we'd love to hear it. We'll share them too. But our whole goal with these webinars is to make sure that these are highly valuable. And people often don't retain something the first time they see it. So go back and look at it, take notes, and um, again, just get started. Quick tip number two. Tell us about that. Start choosing what adjustments and how you want to classify your adjustments. So that way you can start making decisions, right? At the end of each month, you can run the report. You know, okay, where is my money going? And you can start making decisions, but you're not going to know that until you modify those adjustment types. Yeah, absolutely. And then the monthly report, analyzing that, that's going to make your brain hurt. 
but it's start, you know, and again, we're here to help in any fashion. I think once you start to do that, if you use a great analytics platform like Dental Intel, or you have robust reporting, you need to interpret what those reports mean on a regular basis and analyze what you're giving away. And it's okay. I think you do need somebody, Ariel, that can tell you the truth. Because if you're just looking at those reports yourself, you're going to justify them or sometimes feel shameful about them. And that's not helpful. You need somebody that can say, listen, let me tell you the truth about what's on this piece of paper or on this financial dashboard that we're looking at together, right? A hundred percent. And that's just a human nature, right? Is when we see our own information, like you said, we justify it or we say, hey, um, but it's nice to talk through it with someone and say, okay, what does this mean? Is this something I'm okay with? Do I need to make changes? Um, it's, but you have to see those numbers. And I, and I agree is talk to someone about them as well. Absolutely. So quick tip number three, tell us about that. So now that you have your financial policy, right, you're thinking, okay, I have it. We're going to review it. We're up to date. Talk with your team members. Make sure your team understands. Have your team members educate you on the financial policy. Make sure that you're speaking the same language. Right? We all hear things a little different and we understand things differently. But when it comes to your team and your office finances, you want to all be speaking the same language. So make sure that they understand it um, and that it's truly is actually documented because if it's not documented, there's no saying what's actually happening within your team. Absolutely. If it isn't written down, it doesn't exist. So quick tip number four, gosh, got to say it again. <laughs> bill your always, full fee. <laughs> always bill your full fee. Now we'll open up for questions. One of the suggestions that I have for everybody is if your team members who work in the admin area, haven't been exposed to great education. We have an incredible offering where if you go to our website and you go under resources, go down to events, we've updated our event schedule and you're going to be able to see today we've got the webinar on here. But as you start to scroll down, you're going to see this course. It is amazing. And I highly encourage you to attend yourself if you're a dentist and have your team members and it's okay if you send your admin team members without you. But I think once you bring, I think it's always great when a dentist goes with an admin team member. Number one, it shows that you support. Number two, you're going to have a lot of alignment conversations where your admin team members are going to hear best practices about how to think up front. And your admin team member is going to ask you, is that true? I mean, is that how we want to do it? And you're going to have to be there to say, yes, this is what I want or no, this is what I want. And Miranda Beeson, who's our director of education, she runs an incredible course called Beyond the Front Desk, Achieving Dental Administrative Excellence. Now, you're going to learn a lot, but the number one benefit that comes out of this is people come out of this course able to think about how it all works. Yes, there are details. Yes, there are elements, but nothing is better than when you can think well about the front. What else would you say about this course, Ariel? That it's re-energizing, um, you know, as admin team members, they come out re-energized with, like you said, new ways to think about things, how to handle things in the moment. Um, and then I, I do think when the doctor comes along with the team, it is, it just shows that you support them. And you may not know exactly how they do everything or what they do, right? But you support them and you want to give them those resources. Um, I, I've i never heard anything bad about anyone who's gone to it, right? They all love it. They bring something out of it. Um, and teams just love going together. It's really a culture building when they can hear things, learn things, and implement things together. Absolutely. Now, remember, these are the people that manage your time and your money, it would be very important for them to know best practices. So I'm just going to stop screen share and we'll open it up for questions if anybody has any questions. And I'll add the um, uh, the actual downloads to the feed. And someone said, Kurt should do a video on it's not a write-off. It's a tumor. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so any questions from people that are watching at all, we'll... Uh, We'll stay on and, and answer questions. But any additional thoughts that you have, Ariel, that have come up just when, when you're thinking about these things? No, I think we hit them all. I mean, you know, the old, the one thing I do want to say, though, is like 
if this seems overwhelming because it really can be, just take it one piece at a time, right? Make sure, okay, I need to put it on my insurance claims. Okay, I need to figure out my treatment estimates. Okay, I need this, right? I, I don't want anyone to be overwhelmed, especially when, you know, this may not be your area of expertise, um, but also, like I said, you have great admin team members. Many of them are listening or on here. Let them help you empower your team members. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm going to add these to the chat. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to probably have to, let me just copy the links here. So I don't think we're getting any questions here. There's one. Let's see. looks like we have, we're trying to minimize our monthly amount of in-network write-offs. What do you recommend? Ooh, good one. <laughs> oh, that's a whole, that's a whole webinar. Um, I would say first start is diving deeper into what are those adjustments, right? What are those monthly in-network write-offs coming? Where are they coming from? Are they coming from one, two, seven, 70, right? Start seeing where they're coming from. And then that way you're able to say, okay, do we need to schedule, you know, strategize on our scheduling? Do we need to do a fee increase or do we need to renegotiate? You know, do we need to end our contract? Whatever it may be, um, you're not going to know until you really have a clear picture of what those are. Um, and then I know we we like to mention a lot of tools is we do have the PPO roadmap um, and that is a robust tool to help you say, okay, these are the numbers I have. Um, this is what I want to do. Make a decision whether you want to end up ending contracts or not with your PPOs. It will walk you through that. Um, and it's, like I said, it's a very robust tool on that. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're listening to the the replay, um, or even this webinar, feel free to reach out to any of us. We're so happy to help not only with these downloads, but also where you might find the replay. Uh, and even if you're going through the downloads, you have questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'll help you every step of the way. So I just added, uh, I'm not the best technical expert as you can see, but I did add the education um, for the credits in here, I'll add that one more time. And then also links to the downloads so that you guys can all have copies of that. So, all right. Any other questions? Did one more come in? No, uh -huh. they require access permissions. Okay. So, all right. I, <laughs> I will get you updated links to each one of those. So Michelle and everybody else that's listening to the webinar, if you don't mind, just send us an email to uh, either, let's do it to info at actdental.com and we'll be able to get you all of those. Uh, and I'll also attach them to the replay email that'll go out tomorrow. So if you registered for the webinar, you're going to get a replay email tomorrow morning and it's going to go out sometime around 7 a.m. In that email, there'll be links to each one of them and you won't need... Uh, permission to access the downloads. So thank you guys very much. Cool. All right. You're welcome. Thank you, Michelle. So hope you guys enjoyed today. Please join us for some of the live events that we have coming up this year. Sen keep sending us suggestions for things you guys want to see. And Ariel, thanks for being on. You're amazing. Appreciate it as always. And hope you guys all have a great day. So we'll see you soon, guys. Yes. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.